All right. Uh, it being very slightly past three o'clock, I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting of the Dunn County Executive Committee to order. Um, start with call of the roll. We've got, we're short, Jim Zons, who is excused. Yeah, let's 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 do the let's do this 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 the formal way. Here. No, he's not. <laughs> Here. 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 And Supervisor Zons, who is excused. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's Randy? I bet he thought 3.30. So we shall see him in a bit, hopefully. Uh, approval of the minutes. I would need a motion. I Supervisor so Dean moves. Supervisor Kinnear seconds. Any speaking to the minutes? Um, I got one. All right, Supervisor slight, Humphreys. There's a slight typo. Five uh, A says discussion about the pros and cons. It's got an extra S. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Okay. Uh, motion has made and seconded. Voting to approve the slightly amended agenda. Uh, slightly amended minutes. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes, minutes are accepted. Uh, public comments. Do we have anybody from the public who intends to speak? I think. Oh, that's me. You got it? Okay. Um, so with no public comments, moving on to item five, report of the county manager. Chris, take it away. All right, so for the purposes for the um, awareness of our new um, supervisors today, we typically review the uh, upcoming county board agenda. It is included in the executive committee packets. It also is in, will be included in your orientation materials in a bit, so you'll see it as well. Um, and let me get to it myself. There's nothing, it's a outside of the reorganization. The only other thing that I believe isn't isn't somewhat um, routine is the um, changing of the capital improvement plan and the use of ARPA money. And we'll discuss that in a bit as well. All right. And then um, I also included in your packets and I was going to really try really quickly to get it up, bring it up, but it also is in the executive committee packets. We'll talk about where you are able to find all of that information. It will be emailed to you as well, um, but it is always on the public calendar and you'll see links to how to find that um, later on this afternoon. Uh, but in that packet of information from today's executive committee, I included a report from our investment advisor, which they send out each month to Beata and I regarding our sales tax revenue um, for the year. And again, our sales tax revenue continues to trend upward. I believe we were just under $400,000, three to $400,000 over where we were at this time last year. Um, and that is a trajectory that continues to increase every year. So I uh, just wanted to for you to see that data, I'll share it with you again sometime later on in the in the year, so you can see where that's where that's going. And that is all that I have. Thank you, Chris. Um, on to item six, reports, resolutions, and ordinances to the county board from the executive committee. Uh, first, the resolution amending this uh, capital improvement plan, uh, ARPA funding. Chris, you said you had more on that. I do. Um, so uh, we. As in uh, Beata, Dan, myself, um, have been looking at uh, looking at this ARPA money and tracking it. 
as you may remember, we need to have it um, committed by the end of this year and spent by the end of 2026. Um, and so we had a number of projects improved in 2023 and 2024, which either came in under cost or are not going to be completed or changed in the scope. So probably the most significant one that changed in scope was in the uh, for the establishment of a road between here and the Judicial Center and then the walking path. Um, we nixed the road, updated the service road behind the facilities, um, and then the walking path is a cost shared with the city. So we had budgeted $500,000 of ARPA money for that and we'll end up spending $162,000, which re allows uh, $337,000 for repurposing. So by the time that we um, did all of those um, either under expended or items not purchased, it came out to $1.185 million of ARPA money that remains. Um, and so uh, we also had allocated in 2024 $75,000 to the Sheriff's Department for a camera server and uh, $80,000 to facilities for a controlled lock system. Initially, we thought for this building, um, it became clear and um, maybe I would ask to have Dan speak to this because he has been in the process and knows kind of a bit more about this than I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the uh, as we looked at the money that was uh, kind of put forward to replace the cameras in the in the sheriff's or to upgrade the system in the sheriff's area and the card access system so first of all card access systems and camera systems are commonly they're the same systems so the vendors that do that they 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 greatly align in a lot of cases so that when you swipe your card to get in we take a picture of who that was um so to combine those made sense from a single point of management standpoint. And the other piece that we identified was that the, the changes that were going to be made in the Sheriff's Department were gonna buy us a couple of years. Um, and the camera system and the wiring that is in there is still original to the building. And we have been delaying the inevitable cost of rewiring those cameras with their currently coax cable, which is your, your your basic cable, which networking hasn't been done that way since, well, the 90s when the building was built. Uh, so, um, so we were at a point where replacing of those cameras, you don't, you can't really buy cameras that are going to work with coaxial cable anymore. There's additional co components that we have to put in place in order to make the old cameras work with a modern system. So. As we looked at that and we looked at uh, the security access system, it just made sense to just do this all and do it right now so that we're not going to be asking for another $100,000 next year and $100,000 next year. Let's just do this project and do it right and move forward. And with that, we also were looking to expand the card access, the door access system to and the camera system to all buildings not all buildings, so not the outlying highway buildings, but the uh, highway transit, the judicial center, the government center, and the three neighbors of Dunn County buildings. And we'll be monitoring with cameras, we'll be monitoring ingress and egress, so coming in and out of the buildings, and that's also where we would do the door access system. We're not gonna put it on every door inside of a building, just to get into the building and to get out of the building. Um, and. And I think as we talk about the door access system, the, the, another big component of that, and, and tell you right here, I have a key in my pocket <laughs> that will unlock every one of the doors in all of those buildings. If I lose that key, we pay a lot of money to put new locks in every door. And that same issue exists. There's probably three of us in this building, <laughs> in this room right now that have that key, but everybody else has keys to a whole bunch of different places that need to get rekeyed if we lose them. 
these electronic access systems make it you just click a button when that gets lost, get them a new key and move forward. So and and I think that's a problem as we look historically. How many keys are out there? We don't know. So um, so oh, because we have to have this money encumbered before the end of the year, um, otherwise it would be a potential to carry it over till next year and use it for capital improvement projects for next year. But because we need to um, encumber it by the end of this year, um, because it is an identified need, um, and there's currently, um, if you don't approve this change, there's nothing lost, but we do have an RFP out so we can keep moving quickly. Um, if it is approved and it's anticipated that the cost will be about $800,000 to do all of the buildings. Um, so we, if you recall, we have uh, 1.185 million plus 75,000 plus $80,000. Um, and what we anticipate at this point in time or propose at this point in time to be the difference would be the, to put towards the purchase of our new finance ERP system. Um, it is possible that we won't be ready to do that before the end of the year and contract for that. It's still our timeline and we're still on time for that timeline. But if we had any glitches between now and the end of the year, you may see us back one more time yet asking to repurpose some um, remaining ARPA funding. But it's believed that those two pot projects would be able to be completed with the remainder of that ARPA money and not have to, um, and then we wouldn't have to um, fund those in any other way. So I just wanted to give you kind of the background. Now I did not take each of the, or have the department heads take each of the items back to each standing committee. We did take this resolution to the committee and administration because a number of those um, things were related to that, but I didn't take them back to each standing committee. And so you can, um, you can certainly weigh in if you'd like that to happen as well, but because the executive committee deals with money, it, the issues related to budget and um, funding, it felt like it was okay to for it just to come here. All right, so if I get a motion in a second, motion by Supervisor Morehouse. Was Supervisor Procton, was that your no. hand for a second? Okay. I didn't hear the whole thing here, so. <laughs> All right, so Supervisor Headland seconds um, discussion. Supervisor Steen. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I guess uh, my question would be, would, would uh, we authorize uh, 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 spending uh, one million three hundred forty thousand and two dollars, or spent uh, how do I word it in such a way spending up to that amount, but understanding that it wouldn't cost that much. So what I'm trying to say is, could we do it in one in one motion and address both things? That makes sense. I believe that's what the intent of that is. Yes, is okay. up to that much. Right. Yeah. OK, good. Thank you. Treated as a friendly amendment. Further discussion? Supervisor Calabrese. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a question about the systems, Dan, um, as someone who doesn't know anything about them. Um, could you explain what happens when the power goes out and if there is any uh, fear of hacking into the system? Uh, the there's always a fear of hacking in the system, uh, but uh, so uh, I'll start with when the power goes out. These are all going to be on battery backup. So the the programming that knows that key can open this door kind of exists independent of the of the master server. It's 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 kind of location. It's it's specific to that lock. That lock knows that. So when the power goes out, a battery will take over in order to let people in and out. Um, but then there's also instances with power as we talk about integrating that with uh, fire systems and other components so that when power goes out by default, some doors need to be locked and sometimes all doors need to be open so that we can allow access. And one of the other features that we're really looking for is to make sure that we unlock the doors when we have public meetings. Uh, so we'll be able to schedule those those types of items um, to be able to do that. From a hacking standpoint, I mean, they, yeah, they're, they're, if they're on the network, they're a risk. Um, but that is also something that 
you know, as we've gone through this RFP, uh, vendors may not like me, but <laughs> the, those are those are the requirements that we're really looking to make sure that this is not something that gets easily forgotten. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Sorry. All right, then I did you would say are, we are ready to vote on that. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, 6B, 2024 budget adjustments, uh, DHS. Supervisor Morehouse, would you care to address this? I want to go into a little more detail than we might if we didn't have. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. These budget adjustments are relatively routine. Um, this is a happy one. It gives us over $300,000 in additional grant funds. Grants were larger in the Department of Human Services than was originally anticipated. And uh, Ms. Winter is here if there are any questions, specific questions. All right, and I will note for the, for the, for the new supervisors in the audience that what we are doing is we need to maintain a balanced budget. So when we have new inputs, we have to adjust the budget to uh, allocate those funds so that we can spend them. All right, I would need a motion. Supervisor Morehouse uh, and a second, Supervisor Steen. Um, any further speaking to the motion or any questions for Ms. Winter? No, looks like looks like we're good. Um, then we are ready to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Item seven, review of reports, resolutions, and ordinances coming to the county board from the standing committees. Uh, item A, resolution appointing the county treasurer. Uh, Supervisor Headland, do you want to speak to that or is that a Chris thing? Whichever. <laughs> Um, I can go through and then we, if you have any further questions, ask Chris. Um, the committee administration uh, is given the duty of when something like an elected official leaves office prior to their term of election, we must fill that position. Uh, and so uh, the committee administration uh, had our staff, including HR, uh, uh, advertised for a position of treasurer, knowing that this appointed position will have to uh, be reelected if they want to stay in that position in the fall elections. So it's a basically it's a temporary appointment to fill the position until an official election. Um, so we met uh, with uh, personnel, developed a uh, a group of three people, so to speak, that we decided we wanted to interview for the position. We met uh, on 28th and did that, and um, uh, bringing forward a name that will go forward then to the county board for consideration. Uh, and again, this is not a person that will overlap in the next term election. They will have to run again if they, they want to uh, remain treasurer. So, uh, any other questions? If anyone, go right ahead. Doesn't look like it, Chris. I was just going to add. I'm sorry if I, I had a quick quick check message and make sure it wasn't related to this. Um, so we, um, you have a resolution in the packets. Doesn't have a name filled in, um, but we do have a. Does it? Yes. Oh, in the on the updated now. Yes. The updated. Yes. yes. Yes, yes. If you printed your packet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then it just said yellow highlighter. Yes. So, OK. And, and Nick can correct me if I'm wrong, but this is one of the resolutions that just goes forward from the standing committee to the directly to the board without us needing to vote on it. Okay. Yeah. Correct. This is a report by the administrative or the committee on administration of their resolution that's coming. Yeah, so as a, as, a, as a point for, for the new supervisors, um, some resolutions come forward to committees from the committees to the executive committee just for review. Some of them we actually need to vote on, particularly those that uh, reallocate funds. Uh, this would be one of the ones that just goes straight from the committee, which is where the bulk of our work gets done 
onto the county board for uh, its chance to approve the resolution. Uh, yeah, Supervisor Kinnear. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Now, I must have the old one because I don't have a name. Is the name to be kept secret until? <laughs> it, is, it is not. Okay. So we're going to play yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris. There are 45,000 people in Dunn County. Start with the first one you think it might be. No. Um, <laughs> um, it is Lynn Nigaman. She is currently the village administrator, clerk, treasurer in the city of Colfax. And Supervisor Steen has accused us of rustling. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to 7B, resolution amending job class inventory. Supervisor Headland. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chair. Um, in your packet, there is uh, this resolution, of course, and <clears throat> the background information it basically is a fact that due to the closing of Prevea Health, who under, was under contract to provide physical therapy uh, and, and, occupational therapy. and occupational therapy for the birth to three, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, category of, of children who we serve, uh, close their doors. And in doing so, uh, they canceled that contract. We have a group here, our administration and our uh, HR department and our health and human services committee uh, who reached out and found two people who are qualified to do so and are willing to work part time. That is was our only desire and found that it would actually save us money as a county to hire those people part time as opposed to going out and seeking a contract with another provider in the area. And so we did not have job classifications in our uh, group of jobs that exist in the county for those two positions. And so we have to create them. Uh, so that we may then fill them with staff. Uh, there's also another one there uh, who is uh, a person who's already here working uh, for the health department, correct? No, it works for ADRC. ADRC, or ADRC department, excuse me. Uh, and they are going to be given additional administrative duties. And so we are. Uh, we're asked by ADRC to change the title of that person and to also add the duties that they wish that person to encumber in the future. And so that's why we have uh, we have to bring this forward. It has to get voted on and approved because it is a change, small change to the uh, budget, but it's uh, uh, a big change in terms of personnel. And ADRC is Aging and Disability Aging Resources, disability Resources, Resources Committee. 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 There Mr. We go. Chairman, may I? Certainly, Supervisor. Yeah. Um, the uh, occupational and physical therapy positions, again, Ms. Winter is here if additional detail is needed. These are the current, the people coming on are the current providers of the birth to three program. So there is continuity of care with the with the littles and with the family. And because of the hard work of our department, what we're discovering is that these positions will be able to be filled as county positions for less money than we were paying uh, our contract with Prevea. And the ADRC position is entirely grant funded. Thank you. Thank you. As with the earlier ARPA funds, I am always glad to hear about things that cost less. Um, item 7C. Oh, actually, is there anything, Any does anyone have any more comments or questions for on that item? Does not look like it. 7C, resolution for one-time floating holiday payout for E911. Who is, who wants to address that? Sure. Go ahead. Um, or, or Chris? Jenna? Jenna? Is she, oh, Here. there we are. Of course. 
<laughs> it's like there are a number of people who could. <laughs> okay, good afternoon. Um, so before you is a resolution that is requesting the ability to pay out the um, remainder of floating holiday hours that were provided to staff that work in the 911 center in 2023. So a little bit of background on floating holiday for our 24 seven operation employees. They receive a bank of floating holiday for the year January 1. Um, due to staffing challenges in that department um, and the inability for employees to use this floating holiday, normally they would otherwise lose it by the end of the year if it hadn't been used. But because of the, and I'll say dire uh, situation with staffing in the 911 center, we are requesting a one-time exception for um, those folks that were not able to use their floating holiday within that team. And I was just wanting to reference the anticipated total. Um, so that's about 184 hours that were unused collectively as a group and will cost roughly $5,176. This would not be an impact to the budget being paid out this year because although we are working on it as much as we can, staffing is still low and they, they do still have vacant positions. And we do also have our emergency management and communications director here for any other questions, not to put her on the spot. Um, so that is the request and uh, I appreciate your consideration. Great. Thank you. And Jen, if you would introduce yourself for the... My apologies. I am um, Jenna Nutter, and I'm the Human Resources Director for the county. Great. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Uh, Supervisor Headland. Uh, just, yeah, kind of, and just as Jenna said, in, in reality, this money was funded last year mm -hmm. and was carried over into this year. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at things called carryovers, and the new supervisors will see that, and they'll see uh, what that means, and that is just unspent budgeted money. So we actually had a carryover from last year. Uh, we're going to go back and, and pick it back up and, and pay these people uh, instead of allowing them to take the time off. Thank you. Any further questions for Jenna or comments? No? All right. And I believe this one just rolls on to county board as well. So that brings us to the end of our review of reports, resolutions, and ordinances coming to the county board from the standing committees. We move on to item eight, reports from standing committees. Um, well, let's let, let's do this as a round table and introduce yourself as we go. So uh, I'm gonna start with Supervisor Vogel. So I'm Ann Vogel um, and chair of the facilities committee, which last met on March 27th at 6 p.m. Um, and our county manager, Chris Corpola, gave a great presentation to the committee um, about the history of solid waste and recycling so we could get an idea of what that facility's shape is, you know, what what um, we used to do out there. Um, and in 2021, um, it was appraised for $300,000 for the transfer station and the 10 acres that it, it sits on. Um, but the building that one of the buildings that's out there would take over two hundred thousand to repair it. So we have to weigh that. Um, and the facilities director, facilities park, Scott Nabafelt, um, mentioned that he had contacted the DNR um, about getting it inspected um, to see if there was any contamination. But if we find contamination, then we have to clean it up. <laughs> okay. But um, we're checking to see how much that will cost um, to get it tested. Probably makes sense whether we lease it or sell it to know what's there, but maybe not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a scary thought. Um, and then um, CVTC has contacted the county to use um, the house um, behind 
this building, right? Um, from May 20th to August 8th, because um, they're doing renovations at CBTC, and so they needed somewhere for adult education services. So we thought that was a good idea and a good collaboration. Um, then we had a great report from the fair um, from Deb Gottlipson. And so they're moving along. Um, they have all the entertainment, um, most of the judges. Um, they're gonna have a car show on Sunday and also antique tractors this year. So um, then we had the Menominee Rifle Range annual report. Um, and then um, there's a lot of safety training that the employees are going through um, chainsaw safety, hearing tests, um, and they're they're all completing it. And then um, as far as projects, they helped um, work on the excavation for the walking and the bike path, and they've listed um, some of the timber on surplus. So they're doing a great job. Thanks. Thank you, Supervisor Vogel. Does anyone have any questions? All right, Supervisor Morehouse. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Diane Morehouse. I'm the chair of the Health and Human Services Board, which is comprised of five county board supervisors and three community members appointed, including a physician. Um, we last met on Thursday, March 28th. We had our usual great reports from all three of our departments, which are the Public Health Department, the Department of Human Services, and Veterans Services. Um, you will see this uh, next week at the board meeting, but veterans, we, we accepted the Veterans Services Annual Report, and you will note that through the efforts of the Veterans Services staff, um, uh, advocating and working extremely hard for past compensation for damages for health care coverages and, and so on, that they're returning $29,761,000 to Dunn County last year, $29 million. Bucks. Um, we reviewed what we hope are all of the final budget numbers, which tend to be slow for human services, but all to the good. Uh, $567,000 uh, returned to the uh, general fund from DHS and uh, $23,000 from the public health department. Um, we spent a long time looking at the health department's proposal for non-transient, non-community <laughs> water system. I always have to read that. So this is like campgrounds and fairgrounds and hotels and churches and so on. We contract with the DNR. Uh, to do safety inspections of uh, the water to see if those water sources comply with administrative standards. Those facilities pay us a small fee um, every year, but it turns out that the fees are often unpaid and go on for some months. So we uh, approved, uh, we approved, uh, uh, and because it takes staff time uh, to do the notifications and the follow-up and the rechecking. So we approved a $25 late fee. And we also approved an additional fee for private wells, which are also uh, inspected, but there have been some uh, instances of private wells being dug without appropriate permits. So we checked with neighboring counties and find out that they all um, uh, uh, charge a, a, a late fee for that. So we approved that as well. Um, we approved the job classes. We um, approved a budget adjustment and uh, noted the March vouchers, which we always look at. And our next meeting is tomorrow. Uh, there are some, were some staff conflicts and the health department is doing a resource fair. So we are meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. in this room. Thank you, Supervisor Morehouse. Any questions for Supervisor Morehouse? Supervisor Headland. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, as we talked, er I mentioned earlier about some of the meetings we had uh, and the work that we did on uh, procuring a replacement for the uh, uh, county uh, treasurer. <clears throat> Along with that, uh, I myself uh, chair of the uh, Committee on Administration. Um, Mr. Tim Lenau was a previous vice chair of the committee. And again, we have five committee members. Um, we met uh, our last meeting that was a 
monthly meeting was after we uh, convened and had a meeting at 1230, which was meeting in which we chose a replacement or a nominee for a replacement for the uh, treasurer. Uh, and during that meeting, we heard from all the uh, uh, departments that report to the committee administration. And they are uh, the administration department itself, human resources, criminal justice, collaboration council, the treasurer, the clerk, and the IT department. And all those departments provide us ahead of time in writing a report, which also includes an update on their ongoing budget and expenditures. Um, after reviewing and, and talking with those people, we then considered the resolutions that you've already heard about, uh, pass those and move them forward. Uh, and uh, at that point, uh, I'd like to say thank you to uh, some out, the outgoing members of my committee. We had a great committee in the last two year term and <clears throat> there's gonna be some new faces and uh, very welcome. I'm, I know that the people that are coming on board will do a great job as has been done in the past and uh, keep things in administration moving forward. Uh, I was looking for the date here and I missed it. I forgot it to write it on my calendar, but uh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Same day as yours. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, coming up here April 28th, three o'clock in this meeting, the committee administration will convene. And uh, so basically, I guess we look at the calendar. It's generally the fourth Thursday of the month and normally at 3 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Headland. Supervisor Quinn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm uh, Tom Quinn. I'm the chair of the Planning, Resource, and Development Committee. Um, our committee has oversight of the Environmental Services Department, which is a uh, really three divisions or few departments in the county that are sort of self-directed, and that's the the surveying department, the planning and zoning department, and the land and water conservation department. And they, those three departments uh, sort of uh, operate together to handle joint administrative tasks and do a really, really good job of collaborating with each other. We also include uh, in our group the register of deeds. So we meet typically twice a month. Um, and uh, because because we deal with land use issues and some permitting and environmental issues, it it seems like we often have a, a a fair amount of public interest, and so we try and uh, structure our meetings so that if the topic we're addressing is uh, of there are people attending who want to listen and sometimes many oftentimes want to speak. We also try and we also have that and we we allow if possible if practical a certain amount of interaction between the committee and the public uh, which you know really works pretty well um, our last meeting was april 3rd uh, the meeting before that was uh, the last was two weeks before that in um in march and in that meeting we had a public hearing uh, dealing with an ordinance amendment coming from the uh, planning and zoning department uh, to to allow for what's called accessory dwelling units to modify the county ordinance to allow for accessory dwelling units to be constructed in the county. This is partly in response to the sort of the the urgency came coming out of the housing study the county did which demonstrated that we have a really serious uh, shortage of housing opportunities, both home, home, both home ownership and rental opportunities in the county. One way to address that, that the committee worked on was to see if it was possible to develop a, is to see if it's possible to develop a ordinance change that would allow homeowners and landowners to build accessory dwelling units on their property, smaller units that wouldn't necessarily have to have a separate lot. 
so it would be it would it would uh, increase their right to do that uh, um, as a way to potentially increase housing availability in the county. The public hearing in March, uh, as is often the case, had a lot of uh, people testifying on both sides. Um, and a lot, it, as often happens, really uh, useful questions were were presented by the by the hearing. Uh, the committee decided at that time that it was best to recess that hearing and reconvene it at our at our next meeting in April, which is April 17th. So we'll reopen that hearing uh, at that meeting, take further testimony, and then we'll uh, try and make a decision whether or not we want to go forward to it, and if so, bring it to the county board at a future meeting, or whether you know it needs more work, it needs more uh, more more study, more discussion, and in particular, I think we'll we'll decide: do we need to have more discussion out in the county about it? Are the people in the county comfortable with this? Any changes that we would make? Or is it something that we need to build a bigger consensus around? So that's how that's that's a typical uh, practice in our committee and typical experience for us to have. But the hearing will be on April seventeenth. Um, see, we also uh, had a report, had a, just an update on the rewrite of the county comprehensive land use plan. This is something which is dealt with probably every ten years. It's been a while since we did ours, and it's time to look at it again. And that also gets to this question of, is this ADU idea something that fits the plan, what we want our county to be like and look like? So that process will be, uh, it, the planning department is developing a public participation process, which will facilitate discussion about those questions, really important questions. Uh, in the county over the next year, really. Uh, we had a report from them about their timeline on that. Uh, and we heard from the land and water conservation folks about the fact that we have some leftover funds and that they plan on starting to do the water, another round of sec second round of water testing, um, I think this month. And then we had the annual report from the Register of Deeds, which we'll see at the county board meeting this, this month. That's about it. All right. Thank you, Supervisor Quinn. Supervisor Kinnear. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Mike Kinnear, and I am currently chair of the Neighbors Committee. And uh, just for information, uh, the state uh, really looks over the neighbors closely and they have what they call a survey and we might call an inspection. So they, and the neighbors is actually also three different nursing homes. The three buildings are each considered a different nursing home. So the state comes in at least three times a year. And they just had one for central and they had, they did have one minor citation and that can be uh, maybe having a candle in a room that's not even lit. Uh, it could be a door crack that's too wide when doors come together. So one out of the entire central, and the average is eight. Um, so you can imagine when someone comes in to do an inspection, they have to find something. <laughs> so they, they, they've just been doing a wonderful job. So that, that they got through that one. Uh, the new bus is up and running. Look for Chuck uh, running around the community. Its name is Chuck, and uh, the logo is on there now. Uh, they had been fundraising for that bus and had raised quite a considerable amount of money. They're going to continue to fundraise, but now for the beautification around the area for, for so the, the residents can see it. And evidently, there's an Eagle Scout that's going to do some building of uh, some raised beds. I know they have some now, and uh, they're easier for the folk to see. Uh, the Certified Nursing Assistant course is up and running. In fact, did we finish the first? We finished the first one with six people in it. Uh, and that's been a long time coming. Uh, Carmen has done a great job getting that going. And another one will start, uh, or did start? 
Okay, so uh, she said that there wasn't enough, there weren't enough signed up for the second one, but there will be another one in May. Uh, so that's really good news. And uh, WISCare is a program that actually pays their tuition. And I think they're required then to work a certain amount of time at the place where they receive their training. So that's wonderful news uh, because uh, the, the neighbors uh, dire most uh, needed uh, position is a CNA. And uh, let's see. That's pretty good. I, I just have one question that's related. Uh, did how many of you knew that Representative Moses and Summerfield and Senator uh, Jeff Smith were here talking about uh, long term care? Uh, they they were at Chippewa Valley Learning and Retirement Program. Some of you knew that. Oh, okay. I didn't know that till afterwards. But if you want to see what they said, it's online. So uh, they were up here, and there was quite a discussion. Uh, Chippewa Valley Learning and Retirement Program. So uh, we will meet again at the end of this month on 425, and uh, that's it. Thank you, Supervisor Kinnear. Supervisor Calabrese. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will turn this way since I so I can talk to the new supervisors. I'm tired of you old supervisors. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am John Calabrese. I'm the chair of the Judiciary and Law Committee currently, and um, it's a committee made up of five people. There will be one new supervisor on that committee and uh, four and three other veterans. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Um, and we typically meet on the fourth Monday of every month, and uh, we receive reports from a number of departments and it's I have to say it's pretty humbling as a regular person in the community to hear reports from people who literally in some cases are in charge of departments that run every second of the year. And so sheriff's office. The clerk of courts criminal justice collaboration committee council uh, district attorney child support. Uh, emergency management 911 and uh, the medical examiner. I'll submit reports to the committee about a week before um, the meeting and all the supervisors read every word of those reports uh, from top to bottom, including me every time. <laughs> and um, at the last meeting on March 25th, it wasn't a very long meeting, but we reviewed the reports. Department heads are provided an opportunity to elaborate on their reports or add any information that has come before them since they wrote their reports. Um, the sheriff talked about a training he was at um, for a week in Quantico, Virginia with sheriffs all across the country. That was very interesting. And um, something that the committee does sometimes we did at the last meeting, we had to um, dissolve the sheriff's current eligibility hiring list, um, which happens when he has gone through all the names and needs to get some more names for other hires that um, he's taken care of either for the sheriff's department or the jail. And I said already that we meet the fourth Monday. And so our next meeting is April 22nd uh, here in this building. Thank you, Supervisor Calabrese. I will take a moment. I think most of you have seen me at least once or twice. I'm Kelly McCullough. I'm the county board chair um, currently, and uh, I hope to be again in this coming term. And with that, Supervisor Brock now. Oh, how long I got to handle this thing? <laughs> Randy Procno, chairman of uh, Highway and Dunn County Transit. We meet every second Wednesday. Um, Transit basically been working on getting an electric bus. That's been going on for four or five years, but it's getting closer. Hopefully within next year we'll have that. As far as highway goes, um, the big project is Highway B. Um, obviously just kind of started on that. Um, there's going to be closed. From April 15th, Badger Drive to 650th Avenue, there's going to be detour, and it's quite a long detour just to let you know ahead of time on that. Um, winter projects would 
didn't plow a lot of snow this winter. We did a lot of brushing instead. Um, that's all cleaned up good. Um, saved some money, obviously, since we didn't plow all winter long. Uh, otherwise, the other projects, the big one is just County Road B is the big one. So there will be some closures on that just to be head, heads up on that. So otherwise, that's all I got. Thank you, Supervisor Proctor. Supervisor Steen, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, I guess I could. Thank you. Uh, uh, Gary Steen from District 5, Colfax. Uh, I'm the vice chair of the county board. And uh, an another shameless plug for myself, I'd like to be uh, vice chair again. Uh, I'm also chairman of the legislative committee, which does not meet regularly. But what we've done in the past here is we've tried to uh, I guess canvas our uh, committees uh, uh, issues that uh, are important to us and that we'd like to see addressed by the legislature. And uh, we meet as needed, although we encourage uh, every year all our committees to <clears throat> uh, put down their items and then we update them and then we take them, send them on to the Wisconsin Counties Association to make that part of their legislative agenda. Uh, in the past, we've tried to have our uh, some, uh, our representatives come here and meet us, and uh, we've had uh, limited success doing that. We're trying to do this to be a little more proactive and get their ear uh, so that we can ha have some uh, input on what they do. Uh, and I'll be in the orientation, I'll be addressing some other stuff. So welcome aboard. Pleased to meet you. All right, and that concludes the reports of committees, which uh, Brings us to our next item, which is the next meeting date, May 8th, 2024 at 3.30 p.m. Um, before I adjourn, Dan Dunbar is going to come up here uh, and let you know who you need to talk to about getting your new laptop if you're a supervisor. Um, and since that's not really official business for this meeting, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn and hand it to Dan to introduce your tech support folks for this. We are adjourned. <laughs>